Terry McDade, aka the Pirate Hunter, and this is an inbox kit review of Polar Light's Headless Horseman kit. It's in 1 8 scale, and I bought this for the 2016 Pop build on International Scale Modeler. This is a big box, it's 14 and a quarter inches by 10 inches, and when I got it, it had even quite a whoop de do right in the center of it here where they had all the plastic in here. There's only approximately 58 parts, I think, in this kit. But the amount of plastic in just them 58 parts is pretty amazing. On this one, you can put away your PE glasses and tweezers and enjoy this one. You, don't, you aren't going to need them on this one. There's no small parts on this. And if you're really into D and really enjoy that, you'll enjoy this one because there's only a choice of two decals on it. So if this video is a little um, strange on it, I broke my camera mount for my Tab 2 and I've got it Grouse Creek Field Engineered to try to be able to do this till I can get another one for it. So let's go ahead and start with this. The box art on this is pretty good. The one thing uh, I don't really like on this is the eye on the horse here. It's just, I don't know, something strange looking on it. And Two Kids No Sleep made a comment on the reveal on ISM about red eyes and I've got to, re I've got to agree with him on that. This thing definitely needs red eyes on it. Front of your box looks as the box art on it which is pretty good. Standard skill level 2 plastic assembly model kit age 10 on up. The side of the box, I don't know, uh, it's just got more same information on the front on it. Rather than try to get this big box turned under that camera. On the back of this is from the legend Sleepy Hollow writes the Headless Horseman. The model stands over 11 inches tall. And this is what they, one of the painting suggestions on this. And as I said on the eyes, the way they're painted on an actual model, they just look strange. It's red eyes have got to go in there. It's, uh, this is what you see is what you get on this. It includes an 8 inch base with detailed tree and pumpkins, realistic, realistic textures, nameplate with decal, parts molded in black. This is your only decal you got in here. You can either put Headless Horseman on there or Graveyard I think. And that's it for the decaling in this one. Standard warnings, choking hazard, small parts, not for children under 3. Uh, skill level 2, age 10 on up. Shows you the different stuff you need on it. Collectormodel.com, round2models.com on it is the information on that. So let's look at it and see what we got. I said I already reviewed this in for ISM, so I've already had the plastic bags out. Now once you take the plastic bags out of this, it's a little tough to get them all back in there in the order they go. When you open it up, there is a large amount of plastic in there. So let's look at this and see what we got. I don't know how well the camera's going to work on the detail on this. This is uh, first part out. There's part of the tree branches. And this is part of the horse's hide. There's a lot of hair on it, detail on it. This has a, a detail on that. You can feel there's a lot of detail on this. It's got the stirrups on this one, tree branches, more parts of the horse. It's got the front legs in this bag of the horse. And like I said, there's a lot of detail, uh, a lot of hair on it, horse hair on it. So it's got the hooves on it. Looks pretty good. This one, this is the tree on it that you see on that. It shows it in the background. Not only does this, uh, snaps together pretty good. It's got guide pins and when you snap it together, a little tiny bit of seam, but I think when you glue it together, it ought to take a lot of this away. Everything has got guide pins on it. So, and they can either be a bane or they can be a blessing on building stuff like this tree limb. There's other parts of the tree limb tree in here also. 
It's got horse's legs, back legs. Now, this is what's funny. All the rest of the horse has a lot of detail on it. These are smooth. But these are the inside legs on the horse. So I don't know if they just did not put detail on them because they figure they're not going to be seen or something like that. I guess you could put it on it if you wanted. Uh, you maybe even do something with a Mr. Surfacer to put a little bit of roughness or detail on it. And this is his left arm. And on the back of the glove, there's a lot of detail on it. A lot of raised detail. The glove looks really good. The detail on this, you've got a lot of detail on the cloth, on the bottom of the glove, the inside of it. The whole thing has a lot of detail. Of course, this is a big kit, too. So it's easier to do detail on something really large as compared to a 144th or something like that. These are the two biggest pieces in this. This is the base they show on that back that the horse mounts on. It's got a lot of detail. You can see where all the hoof marks are in it. The ground is pretty rough. This is where the sign goes there that you decal. There's where the pumpkins go, things like this, uh, where the tree base is on it. So it's that tree base mount's pretty big. Because that tree stands, you know, is fairly good sized and it also serves another purpose. This is the his cape, and this is a large piece of plastic. It's heavy, it's thick. It's uh different than what you see on a lot of the uh Disney on the Disney Legend of Sleepy Hollow or the Headless Horseman, whatever you want to call it. His had more of a cape that looked almost like Batman or Superman on it in the cartoon. But this, again, a lot of detail. Heavy. It looks good, though. It's got the number 22 on it, so in case you get confused and don't know what part it is. This is half of the horse. And this is the other half of the horse. They come in separate bags because they're pretty good sized on this. Again, a lot of horse hair on it, a lot of detail on the saddle. The tack has a lot of detail on it. The one thing that I think I will do where this to make it stand out just a little bit, I might take and just put a needle in a pin vise and just run it along the edge so it gives a little sharper delineation on it. It's thick plastic, so I think you could do it and not worry about breaking through on it. Belly of the horse, same detail, same on the other side. Uh, you can see where the uh, stirrups go and everything else. Good looking, like I said, good looking model so far. There's no flash on it that I found yet. This is got your pumpkins, and this is your options. You have the option of either using a sword which has a hand on it that you can put on the arm. Uh, there's the scabbard for it. You have, or you can use a hatchet on it that goes on it. There's the different, uh, there's, diff there's all sorts of different stuff on this. There is uh, a spare uh, handle for the sword. The Spurs are here. There is a spare hand for it. There's something. I don't know what that is. That's your signpost for your only two decals. This is for your reins, and it's got for the bit on it. And the way they stick down there, I think I'll change that a little bit so they're not straight, quite so squared off. Change it a little tiny bit on it. So I think what this is for is you can use, if you're using the hatchet, you take and you can put this in the scabbard for the sword that he'll have on his side also. But I, the, I gotta admit, I would rather use a sword on it. That's what the original one I ever watched, and that's pretty much what he is always showing, carrying. I don't know what you can do as far as, you'd have to do something with this to mount it on some kind of uh, holder for it, uh, 
cut this off. I don't know. We'll figure it out on that. If I go with a sword, I'll figure something to do to put that on. This is all the pumpkins that you've seen in the drawing on it and the horse's mane, a horse's tail, I'm sorry, on it. There's other parts here. The pumpkins are really, really, really good looking on it. There's a lot of big detail, not a lot. So it's really, it's really a pretty good kit. This is the last one of the sheets of the sprues of plastic. This is another one of his arms. So you can change this and use different arms on it, things like that, based on what you want to do. It, again, the uh, detail matches the detail on the other gloves. So it's, again, oh, uh, got alignment pins on it. And this is his body. And the front of this has got a lot of detail on the front of his uh, shirt or jacket, whatever you want to call it. There's his, uh, the bottom. There's his back on this. Not a lot of detail in it because the cape's going to hide that. The bottom of his, where it goes onto here, it's got a lot of detail on it. His legs have got a lot of detail on them. So you can, there's a lot of this that's really... Um, detail oriented and this is where I think it's going to be on uh, the decals which I like are were individually packaged with a little protector on it there's your two your whole two decals in a kit look pretty good on it they're in register look good This is your decals. Uh, decals. It's been a long day. This is your uh, instructions on assembly instructions. Step one, which is your the tree and the base, the pumpkins on this. Step two is step two and three are putting the horse together. Step four is putting the tail on him, the stirrups the uh, reins and the uh, bit that goes through his mouth. Step five is legs and the, his uh, lower half, the upper body, uh, attaching the legs on step eight, attaching that all together. Step nine is for whatever sword or hatchet you want to use on it. Step ten is for the pumpkin that goes in his left arm. Step 11 shows you attaching the arms. It says, left arm is resin. Use CA or epoxy to attach to torso and jack-o'-lantern. So that's why I'm wondering if it's a different kind of glue. And then it shows you how this all goes together on it. This go mounting to this, cape on this. And it says, long cape should rest on tree branch for support. So that's why I think there's a pretty good amount on this, uh, pretty good base on that, because this is a heavy cape that goes on there. Uh, it goes on painting instructions, use, a, use photo model on the box bottom to aid in color selection, dry brush technique, on it wash technique, uh, on it tells you how to do dry brushing, washing, things like this. And that's about it. This is a really big kit. But you could set down, because there's not a lot of detail on this whole kit, and you'd sit down and throw a movie in that uh, you've watched probably, like me, a dozen times so I don't get distracted and forget what I'm doing. You could sit down and build this in probably an hour and a half or two hours. And that would be a little longer build on this, uh, because everything is just so big and it goes together all in... Uh, sub assemblies and then put it all together on your sub assemblies you can paint or weather dry brush whatever you want now this is where this is really going to be an interesting build for me because you really don't have a lot of small detail painting on this like the eyes things on the horse that's about it as far as small, some of the stuff on the bridle, things like this. 
uh, not the bridle, but the reins and uh, bit on it, uh, the detailing on the saddle and the blanket and everything else. This is all going to be dry brushing. It's going to be washes, tints on it because if, otherwise if you don't do tints and washes on this, you're going to just have something that uh, looks like a really big blob of black on it. So it's really going to be an interesting ex uh, experience for me because the wa I, you know, I'm also using acrylics for the first time on this. So that's going to be another learning curve. But I understand with acrylics you can hopefully correct some of your mistakes on it, especially if you do your uh, gloss coats on it. This will make a large amount of difference on it. You could also take and you get one of the small lighting kits and you could put lights, you know, put the lights inside in the eyes or whatever on the horse or coming out from where the headless horseman's neck is, anything like this. All things considered, this is a really interesting kit. Now, as far as the hoof prints on the thing, yeah, if you want to do it a little different on it, you can take and either make horseshoes for the, you'd have to make horseshoes. This is not thick enough where you could take and just cut down in around here like he had a set of horseshoes on him. So what I would do is just either with some milliput or a couple, just a little piece of, of um, this, you know, styrene on it, just make a little set of uh, horseshoes on this. So you got a little more detail on it, but again, this is going to be all washes, dry brushing, uh, quite a learning curve. So we'll get started hopefully putting this together along with all the other ones we're building. One bridge, one Jeep, uh, Pygmy Panzer, and everything else I'm doing. So hopefully we'll have some more updates on this. My recommendation is, yeah, I'd buy this kit again. It's not, it's not that expensive. It really, it runs, from what I've seen, it runs 28 to about $32. So it's not a major expense, but it's not really a cheap kit. But it just looks like it's going to be a really good kit. Well, this is Pirate Hunter, or Terry McDade, whichever you prefer. And as always, support ISM and UMP. Take care, and as the great Jerry Springer says, take care of yourself and each other. Till the next time, this is Terry McDade.